Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video and welcome to my craft room as well. Today I'm going to be using one of the newest Simon Hurley Create stamp sets to create some beautiful nature scenes on my project using the Simon Hurley Create stamping foam and getting tons of versatility. I'm gonna share a bunch of different tips. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right guys, so starting off with the new rectangle blend stencil, this is what it looks like. It has this rectangle blend that is perfectly sized to fit the stamping foam. And then it also has this piece, which I'm gonna share a really fun technique with as well. All right, starting off with the mask, I'm going to go on the shinier side. There's a more dull side too, but I find that this one transfers the ink a little bit better. Then I'm gonna go in with a couple of my ink colors, starting off with Viper from Simon Hurley Create. Then we'll go in with a little bit of Psych, and I'm just using kind of the edge of the ink pad to add these colors down, and kind of mix them together. It doesn't need to be perfectly blended or anything like that. Then I'm going in with a little bit of Clear Skies, add that color onto the surface, and finish it off with a little bit of No Diving right on top. All right, and with this, we're going to want to spray this down. So just spray it an adequate amount like that. We don't need tons of water, but just enough so you can kind of move and blend it. That's how you know it's going to be perfect. So I'm gonna go in here and wipe off this surface before I lay down a piece of my stark white cardstock. And then we can kind of flip this down and bring it right onto the surface. Now we don't need to center it or anything like that. You'll see the water immediately starts kind of moving and blending and pooling those colors together. And then we can wait for this to sink into the cardstock and dry. I'm keeping this on the screen as this kind of sinks into the surface of the cardstock and dries because you'll see it kind of separating from the cardstock there. And that's how you know it's gonna kind of be ready once it all dries like this edge because we don't want any puddles when we lift it off. Once that's all set into the cardstock, we'll peel it off. You guys can see that dried in there pretty completely we had almost no puddles and it creates this beautiful blended watercolor effect you can't get this with any other technique and it just creates such a stunning result each time here I'm going to just add a little bit of tape onto the back so that it's kind of got a little bit of stick here and then we can use the rectangle blend stencil and what's so cool is I can just realign this all along the edge and I used to have to kind of like tape or mask things off but this way I can just use the stencil. And then we can go in with the exact same colors that we used on the card here in the same places. So here I'm going in with a little bit of no diving and bringing that in up on the edge here. And then we'll bring in our new color that we used, Viper, on the bottom here. And the reason I like to do this and go back in and blend on the edges is it because it creates a really beautiful and dramatic effect to shade the edges. It's something that they do in photography called a vignette, and it draws your attention to the center because it's lighter. So that's what we're doing on the card here. And you can see when I lift this off, just the beautiful depth and dimension that it adds. And I love that we had the stencil to mask it off so we didn't have to use tape and anything like that. All right, to finish this card off, I'm going to go in with the Nature Silhouettes stamp set. I love these stamp sets that I created because they work perfectly with the stamping foam, which I'll show you in just a little bit, but they also work great and are sized perfectly for this rectangle blends stencil too. All right, so I'm going in my Misty stamping tool so I can get this perfect and it's a nice solid image, so that's why we're doing it in here. And I'm going to go in with this tree line image. So all you have to do is line it up in the bottom corners and line it up with the bottom edge too, and then it should be perfectly aligned so that we can stamp it down onto our card. I'm gonna do some heat embossing, so whenever you used ink or ink blended, it might be dry to the touch, but you also wanna make sure that the resins are all dry so that nothing is going to stick to it. So I'll just heat set this quickly to make sure everything is nice and dry. And before I do my stamping, I'm also gonna use the anti-static powder tool to make sure that powder doesn't stick where I don't want it to. All right, now to stamp such a solid image, I'm going in with VersaFine Clear, which is a pigment ink. And I'm just going to tap this all over my image here. And it's a really nice dark and solid black ink, which is gonna give us great coverage on such a solid silhouette image like this. So I'm going to pull this in. Then I'm going to use my Debbie stamp tool. There's a lot of pressure stamping tools for your Misty, but I find that this helps to give me a great impression. And 
There we go. Now we can, I like the, how that looks. You of course can leave it like that, but if I want to, I can just go in and make sure it's even more solid than that by going in with one more layer of ink. And that's the joy of the Misty. It's gonna be in the exact same spot. And there we go. Oh my gosh, look how dark and crisp and solid that tree line is. I absolutely love how that turned out. One thing I like about the pigment ink is I just have to spray this with that water really quickly before it dries there. And then we can rub that off and it's not going to stain too bad. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of clear embossing powder, like I had mentioned, and just throw that over top of the black pigment ink. That way it's going to be kind of sealed in there and you can't get any smudges or anything on your project. And then I'll heat set that until it's clear and shiny. All right, now I'm going to place over this mask one more time of the rectangle blend stencil, just to protect the edges as I'm going to go in and do my blending. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of fake plant. I just want to make this edge of where the tree line hits a little bit darker. So I'm just going in with a tiny bit of that fake plant and introducing a new green color, but really kind of darkening that edge to add a little bit more dimension. And the paper's a little warped, so I just have to hold things down. But again, that stencil makes it easy to just line things up if I want to over and over and recolor things in. Now, the panel that we created is pretty simple. So I want to make a more detailed background. So I'm going in with this sweater weather stencil from Simon Hurley Create, and I'm going to line it up on my card base so that we can create a beautiful pattern in the background. To add some tone on tone, beautiful shine, I'm going in with some Later Gator Lunar Paste, and I'm going to just take a little palette knife here and apply it right down onto one of my blending sponges. You could of course dip your sponge in if you want to, or apply it like this, which is a little bit neater. And then we can go over top, and I'm just going to go in a blending motion like this. It's really easy to apply with one of these domes, and it just goes on in a nice, beautiful, thin layer of the paste. If you need to, you can go in with a little bit more and apply that down, and then go in a swirling motion again and apply it down. The reason I do a swirling motion is if you tap, you get all that texture in there, and I want it to be nice and smooth, so I just kind of do the same motion I would if I were ink blending. And just with that little bit of paste, we're able to easily cover the whole background with that thin layer, and when we peel it off, you can see that beautiful shine that we get, that nice tone untone effect too. I love using cardstock that matches those colors. All right, now when it comes to cleaning, clean your palette knife and stencil right away. So I just go in with a little bit of water and I can clean that off my stencil really nice and easily. You can see it comes clean if you do it right away. All right, and it's best to clean out the sponge too. And I learned from a viewer, Elizabeth, thank you so much. I'm going to spray this down with quite a bit of water. You can also remove it and take it to the sink, but that water is going to really help remove this. I used to just kind of um, dot it out like this, but the water really helps to kind of clean it back. It's washable foam, so that's what's super nice about it. We're able to get it right back to its original color by just blotting until we see no color anymore and that way the foam is going to be nice and soft by the next time you use it. You don't want it to be crusty, so definitely clean it out after every use like this, and it'll save you having to buy a bunch of replacement packs of foam. Awesome enough, in that minute that we've been cleaning, the paste is already dry. So you get that really beautiful shine on your background there, and once it's dry, none is gonna come off on the recipient's finger, but it has just some ultimate shine to it, which is so stunning. The sentiments in the set are so encouraging and some of my favorites. For this card, I think I'm gonna use the sentiment that says, remember that trees lose their leaves every year and remain standing tall waiting for better days. I love that one. All right, so I'll ink that up with some black ink and then we can stamp that down right onto our stark white cardstock. I've added that encouraging sentiment down onto the card and I love how this turned out. That beautiful background that we created with just the mask and then those trees on top make it really stand out on a beautiful card. All right, this time I'm going in and inking and stamping the lighthouse and fishing scene. And I'm going to ink and stamp this one first rather than stamping it down on top of the background once we're done. So I'm going to ink it up with my VersaFine and I'm going to go in and use my pressure tool to stamp this down. And it's nice and dark jet black. I love how that turns out when we stamp in the Misty. And then again, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of clear embossing powder and quickly seal that all in so that it doesn't smudge and then it's gonna be nice and shiny. 
All right, now to color this in, I'm going to take my rectangle blends again. Now this does have etched lines in it to line it up right in the center on all four corners of your A2 size card. But since we stamped this first, I'm just going to line it up with the stamped image that's already there. And we're doing this on the Make Art Station. So I can just grab my magnets, place them down, and it's going to hold down my stencil nicely. All right, now this time I'm gonna go in with my inks. And the reason I like to use this mask over top of an image like this is because I want several colors in certain areas on here that I might not be able to get exact with the stamping foam. So here I'm going in with my blending tool and I'm going to add lots of yellow right around that lighthouse. Lots of this new color, which is called Shooting Star. And it is this super bright, intense, and true yellow, which I just love. All right, then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Guppy, which is a little bit more orange, but it's still kind of a yellowy orange. I'm going to bring it into this edge, and we're gonna create kind of a nighttime sky. All right, and then down here, I'm gonna use a little bit of No Diving, because we're gonna add a little bit of water in there. And I'm gonna bring this color up just a little bit, kind of into that orange color and add it near the fishing scene. This is where we bring in a little bit of Love Struck on a blender brush, and that's gonna create a nice, really great in-between tone that's going to blend these perfectly together. So it's kind of like this berry red color, and it's just going to really bring those two colors together and make a nice purple in between there. So adding that down, and then I'll blend it upward and into my guppy color. All right, one final thing, I wanna add a little bit of yellow or gold lunar paste in the color Slippery and Wet. I wanna test it on a blender brush. So this is one of those fine detail blender brushes. I'm gonna add it onto the surface here and kind of blend it out right where that light section is on the background. And we'll kind of fade it out just by pulling that color in. All right, the reason I heat embossed this is so that we can create a little bit of a resist. So it's not gonna dry fully right there. I'm going to not give it too much time to dry and then just kind of wipe it off from that clear heat embossing. And it's going to mainly stay on the background where it kind of dried into the paper, but then we can kind of lift and remove it off of that heat embossing before it fully dries on there. Now before we move on, let's try cleaning this. So I'm going in with a little bit of water on my paper towel, and I'm going to just go in with my blender brush and kind of clean this off of here. And it seems to be removing pretty nicely off of the blender brush, I would imagine so, because the bristles shouldn't absorb anything into them. And actually a little bit of water helped clean off the excess ink that was in here as well, but I think that cleaned it off pretty nicely. All right, here is that background once we're done. I love that lunar paste up there to add a little bit of extra shine, and then all of that detailed blending in there. So that's why I love that rectangle blend stencil. If you don't wanna use your stamping foam and do things really quickly, and you want some more detailed blending with certain colors in specific areas, that's what that's really great for. I'm using the sentiment that says, keep shining, the world needs your light. And for the keep shining section, I'm just going to go in and just ink up that part of the sentiment to do some selective inking. And then I'm going to go in with, again, my black ink, and we shall go in up to those letters, but leave the keep shining that yellow color. So I used Slippery and Wet for this one because I wanted a little bit of a darker and more mustardy yellow to make it more readable. I've added this all into a card base and I really love how it turned out. Like I said, that rectangle blend stencil is really great for getting all these detailed blends in and then stamping down a silhouette image on top, like the one from this Nature Silhouettes. I love the different scene and how the sentiment really brought it all together. For the next card, let's use it with a piece of stamping foam. So I've gone in with my stamping foam here, it comes in a pack of four, and I've taped it onto my Simon Hurley Create Acrylic Block so I can get good and even pressure. If you wanna see lots more videos with the stamping foam, click up here to check them out. For this, I'm gonna go in with my Ranger Heat It tool and heat up the surface of my stamping foam for about 10 to 15 seconds till it gets good and hot so we can create our impression. Then without hesitating, I'll bring it over to my die. This one happens to be a beautiful cover plate from Altenew and stamp it down into there to create our stamped impression. I love how this looks. It's just so ornate and beautiful. All right, now here's a color combination I love. I'm gonna use a little bit of Crown Me at the bottom. And when you're using your Simon Hurley Create inks on here, you want to use them in a rubbing motion instead of tapping. So I'm gonna go in with Love Struck next. And you guys can see, I'm gonna go in with kind of the edge of the ink pad, 
to apply color in a thin stripe and I just kind of rub it onto the surface. If you tap it, it gives kind of lines and indentations where if you rub it, you get a little bit more even and solid color. And then to kind of blend that out together if you want to, you can go in with just a blending brush or a blending tool to get those colors together. And to finish it off, I'll bring in a tiny bit of shooting star at the top. And if you kind of blended the colors together, like the shooting star pad is super light yellow, you can always go in with just a dry cloth and kind of wipe that off and it'll bring you back to a cleaner color. All right, you don't have to mist this, but I like to. I'm gonna take my fine mist bottle. I'll have this linked down below. And this gives a nice fine continuous mist over the top of this and you want it to be a nice fine mist like that with no globs. You can't see any water globs on here. That's gonna keep the detail very nice. So then I can go on my stark white cardstock and stamp this down. Give some good pressure and then lift it off and you get that beautiful stamped result, which I just love. All right, then I'm going to place this background in my Misty and I'm going to line up my image. Here I'm using the mounted top. Now you'll see that these edges go over the edge of the stamping foam a little bit. That's because the stamping foam shrinks as you use it and that was a piece I've used quite a bit. No worries though, we'll end up cutting this background down so I can just kind of let it hang over the edges a little bit. That's no problem. But if you do um, care that it's gonna hang off a little bit and you don't want it to because you're gonna use it right on the card like this, just go in with a little tiny bit of mint tape and do the simplest masking around by just taping off the bottom sections of the edges like this. One thing I love about the stamping foam is the price point is really, really great. So you can always pick up a new pack and that way everything will line up perfectly like this, but there's always fixes around it as well. All right, again, I'm gonna go in with my VersaFine and just go in here and ink this up. And then I'll go in and stamp it right down onto the background there. So when we peel this off, you'll see that it masked it off really nice and easily. So like I said, if you want to use it right on the background like this, you totally can and mask it off like that. All right, next I'm gonna take a little bit of mint tape and just mask off up along this edge. Again, you wouldn't have to do this if the foam hadn't shrunk because you could go in with the rectangle blends, but this is absolutely no problem. I'm just going to go in here and then use a little bit of the remaining love struck that was on my blending tool and just go in and blend this in a little bit just for some contrast against the edge of that mountain there. And then we'll peel this off and I absolutely love just the little tiny bit of shading and dimension that that adds. All right, I've added down the sentiment that says the best view comes after the hardest climb. I absolutely love that one. But to finish it off, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of slippery when wet lunar paste. And then I'm going in with one of these make art stylus tools. This is from Wendy Becky. And this tip right here is absolutely perfect for using with your lunar paste. So I just dip a little bit of this into the lunar paste and then I can go around and add little dots under my project. So instead of like going in and adding drops that are gonna take a long time to dry, it's almost like adding little tiny enamel accents and I just go in and add them right around the sentiment. And once those dry, it'll become even shinier and it just adds little stars into the background, which I think is awesome. And that finishes off this card. I love using the stamping foam to get that beautiful texture and then quickly stamping this on top for a really quick and easy yet stunning card. All right guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's techniques of using the new rectangle blends as well as nature silhouette stamp set to create some beautiful scenes on my cards. Leave a comment down below on which card was your favorite from today's video. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and click that subscribe button down below to never miss another card making video like this one from me. All right guys, I'll see you very soon and I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye.